I guess a, a home game for you and, uh, you know, the Apex. I just, as much as you've been here, I just, do, do, like, you get any feel, any nerves, any excitement when you walk through the doors anymore? Or is it just like checking into work? Yeah, it's a, you know, obviously it's a fight in the UFC on the biggest stage, and so you're going to get those nerves. Um, but I've been here, you know, like you said, a bunch of times, and especially during COVID, it was like, I think uh, five in a row, five or six in a row I had here. So um, I'm a bit comfortable with it now, and it feels like I'm just going to spar at the gym again. Yeah, not a lot of uh, six foot one guys in your weight class, yet they found another one for you. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. You know, did you change anything in your approach and getting ready? Like, do you try to find? I mean, you don't have a lot of partners in your weight class your size, right? Yeah, you kind of gotta find guys, you know, a weight class above you and uh, kind of maneuver it that way. But you know, I took Sean Woodson on three days' notice, and he's six two and a half, and he's a Golden Gloves boxer. So um, I'm not necessarily too worried about being able to hang with a guy my my length. Um, you know, I fight kind of short, and I feel like Fernando fights a little short as well. So I feel like we're just gonna kind of slug it out on the feet. How about the experience level? I mean, obviously, you've got, uh, you know, droves of it compared to him. You remember what it was like coming in for the first time. I mean, can you use that to your advantage or is a fight a fight? Yeah, 100%. I don't know what's going on with him. You know, I'm, I'm not him. I don't know. I don't even, you know, hang out with him. I have no idea about what's going on in his own brain. But when I was coming off the Ultimate Fighter, I was 14 and 2. He's 14 and 4. And I was about the same age as he was. Uh, I had my UFC debut. I won that by split decision. But, um, it was tunnel vision when I walked out there. I had like, I was so starstruck. You know, you go out there, you see the commentators, you see you see that it's real, you know, and not only um, is it his debut, but he hasn't fought for a couple of years. And to fight a guy like me is not a good, it's not a fun out for anybody's debut. Um, I'm, all, I'm six and six in the UFC, so I'm a 50-50 record, but it's the experience that comes behind it. And, um, you know, to me, it's like you, like you, we were talking a second ago, it's like, it's, I feel like I'm just going out and sparring again. And so I'm going to be comfortable in there, you know, regardless if he is, is or not. So um, if he's not, it's going to be uh, detrimental to him, and uh, that'll be my advantage. Right. You mentioned that layoff. Uh, getting ready for a guy that hasn't fought in that long, right? I mean, do you do you expect that he's going to look different? Or you expect because I mean, you could evolve a lot in that time away, right? You could be a totally different guy than the last tape you saw. So do you expect yeah. like, hey, we got to be look for new wrinkles, or do you think he, you know, a fighter is a fighter and he's going to fight that way? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in two years, especially a kid, you know, his age, you can really make leaps and bounds in um, your skill sets and your, your ability to uh, adapt and become better. Um, but I feel like everybody has their, you know, their strengths. And when you get into a high pressure situation, you fall back on those things. Like, of course, I want to go in there, keep my hands up and throw straight punches. But <laughs> what happens is I get, you know, I get when I, once I start getting, you know, not a little bit of a high pressure situation, get comfortable you know, you start to fall back on the things that you you feel you're the best at. And for me, it's slugging it out a little bit. And so even though I go in there with a game plan, it kind of falls apart a little bit. Just be, And not necessarily because of my game plan is not working. I'm just, you know, starting to feel more comfortable and I'm letting go a little bit more. All right, so last thing for me, I know we talked earlier and you said, yeah, you want to be patient. You don't want to go in there and brawl. Like, I mean, is that something you have to practice every day? I mean, how, how do you keep yourself from falling into that when that's just yeah. kind of – who you are and really what makes you exciting to watch. Yeah, exactly. I think that uh, the best way to answer that is uh, in the Steven Peterson, you know, the fight that I had. Um, if you go back and rewatch that fight, the first round I was disciplined and everything went exactly to plan. Second round was a completely different fight in the third round as well. So, you know, even though you go in there, you know, with a certain way about you and uh, a skill set or I mean a, a game plan on mine, it doesn't necessarily happen the way it should. And the Dawadu also was a good um, example of me fixing that problem. With Dawadu, it was like, first round was exactly how I wanted it to go. And instead of resorting into, uh, you know, brawling it out, just I stuck with the game plan and, and really finished that fight out with that game plan. Hey, Julian. How are you? Were you confused about the matchmaking with, with uh, Fernando? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the UFC has their own ideas about what they want to do with certain guys. And so... I figured, well, honestly, I didn't really figure anything. I just, they offered me and I said, yes, you know, I was looking to fight about that time. And, uh, and so it really didn't matter who it was. I never really said no to guys. I've been, I've only said no to times because of obviously weight cuts and that kind of thing. You know, you want to have a decent amount of time getting ready for fights. Um, and so I usually just say yes to everything, but I'm in the position now where it's, I want to be a little bit smarter with my, you know, with my picks, but there's a handful of guys, you know, you know, uh, that, could be, you know, top 15, top 20 in the UFC that they could have given me that are tougher outs, I think, um, in the sense of experience. 
And just um, last thing for me is, what did you learn from your last fight against Alex Caceres? It was it was a big fight. Um, it was one that you were kind of asking for, man. But yeah. um, what was the biggest thing you learned from it? Uh, you know, just specifically from the fight, I wanted to just be more defensive uh, early on. It, you know, because I I didn't think Caceres had that one punk, one strike knockout power, but he hit me with his hardest weapon, which is a rear you know rear kick uh, to the head. So like. You know, even though I didn't think he had the power to knock me out with one shot, um, that's his, you know, number one uh, power move. So, you know, I need to be aware of those things and not let those things happen again. Thanks, man. Of course.